Hello, how's it going? Those who know me know I'm partial to a good Scotch whisky. And today we're putting two of my very favourites head to head against each other to see which one comes out on top. Now, I like peaty, smoky whiskies. Um, so uh, a lot of people get turned off by this. They, they find it a bit too much, but that's, that's what I like. Um, today is no exception. These are both Talisker uh, whiskies from the Isle of Sky. Talisker Sky and Talisker Portree. Two of my very, very favourites. These rank right at the top of my list. There are a couple that rank right up there with them. Uh, we have Long Row, which is a Campbelltown whisky uh, from the Springbank Distillery, and that's really PT as well. And I have once tried Octomore from Bruich Ladich, which is on the bottle it says super heavily peated. Um, and they're not joking. Now, whichever one comes out on top here, if I can pick, um, we'll have to go against the long roll. But the Octomore can't really go down as my favourite whiskey because it, realistically, I'm not going to buy it. It's £190 a bottle. The only reason I know about it is um, Rachel and I were on holiday last year. We did a little tour of the Highlands. We were in Glencoe in the Clacheg Inn, which is brilliant. And um, she treated me to the single most expensive dram in the bar because I paid for the entire holiday. So she got me this little dram. It was like £24 or something for this little dram. And it was the Octomore. And it was glorious. But realistically, it can't really be on the list because when am I ever going to buy a £190 bottle? That's retail price. So that one, is, it's just nice to have. But, uh, you know, it's not going to happen again. But these two... I absolutely adore. Now, before we get into these, you owe it to yourself to visit the Isle of Skye, where these are from. The Isle of Skye is utterly, utterly gorgeous. It's on the west coast of Scotland, the northwest, and it's one of the most beautiful islands I've ever come across. Just absolutely stunning. Some of the most incredible peaks you've ever seen. And on the west, so southwest shore of the Isle of Skye, you'll find the Talisker Distillery. Up until recently, Talisker was the only distillery on the Isle of Skye, uh, but since another one has opened out, it's simply the oldest distillery on the Isle of Skye. But Talisker, made by the sea, as you can see here, that's their slogan. Um, I mean, the, the, the distillery is right next to the, the ocean. If, if it went any further forward, it'd fall in. Um, they're always peated whiskey. I've tried a few Taliskers. I don't like the 10 year old. I've got to say, I'm not a fan of the Talisker 10 year old. Talisker Storm is very peated as well. I like that. And the Dark Storm, which is even more so, which is really only on the export license, but we did find a hotel up there in Sky selling it, and it was £12.50 a dram, and I had a lot of those. So, you know, I could have two of them is one Octomore, so I could potentially have more Octomore. But anyway, that's not the point. These are much more affordable. Um, this Typically, typically around about fifty pounds a bottle, but many supermarkets quite frequently do a deal on this whiskey, the Talisker Sky, and you'll get that for I don't know thirty or just under thirty, maybe twenty twenty seven pounds, which is for twenty seven pounds. That's a bargain, even around about fifty. It's a good whiskey. The Portree is a little bit more expensive, but not by much. It'll set you sixty sixty two pounds, so it's slightly more expensive than this one. Right, we are going to try these now. I'm not, this is not an official whiskey tasting. I'm not a whiskey taster. So there'll be none of this, you know, this sort of, it, yeah, I'm totally getting uh, uh, the sense of the mountains uh, and the freedom of the highlands and uh, fruits uh, and, and spices, which are absolutely not in here whatsoever. What the hell are you on about? None of that. I don't do that. We're just going to see which is nicer. Now, we'll start with the sky, the... Uh, I suppose you could call it the signature one. He says it's from the Isle of Skye. Um, how, I mean, how beautiful is the artwork on these boxes? It's stunning, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I really like the, the poetry, the way that it's um, been named, because poetry is the capital town on the Isle of Skye. But it's not spelled like that. Um, I'll put the spelling up on the screen, which is the English spelling and the original Scottish Gaelic spelling. Um, but it's similar to this re, but it's not quite the same. The reason it's spelled like this on the bottle is because you can see it's very red colour. 
So this has got the proper coastline colour of the rocks, sort of browny grey, and this has got a red tint to it. This is aged in port casks, right? Which gives it a red colour, and that's how you spell red in Scottish Gaelic. So they tied in Portree, the capital of Sky, with the fact that it's port casks and it's red in colour. I've got to give them props for that. That's I like that. That's nice. It's just uh, just beautiful artwork. Anyway, anyway, let's get on with this. I've got some um, cheese as a, a palate cleanser in between, if I need to. And if you are looking at... Uh, yeah, so this one's almost empty. In my defence, it's nearly the end of March. I think it's the 18th today. Um, I got this on Christmas, so the 25th of December. And I got this on my birthday, which is the 25th of January. So I've had them for a little while. Um, there's a little bit more left in the port tree than there is in the sky. But not a huge amount more. Look at the colour. You see the red from the port casks. I mean, you can see this has got a very golden browny colour. That's a peated colour. Beautiful colour. But, I mean, there's no mistaking. That's the red, the port tree colour. And the bottle, I mean, look at the bottle. It's gorgeous. I mean, these are, like I say, two of my very favourite. They're absolutely wonderful. If you are looking to treat yourself to a nice whiskey, Scotch whiskey, um, in fact, if you're into it at all, get yourself a Glencairn glass. That's what these are, Glencairn glass. They're basically the best way of tasting whiskey um, because 90% or even 99% of your taste comes from your smell, which is why I struggle because I've got poor sinuses. Um, so... Um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but most most glasses, you'll lose about 70% of the smell. This retains about 75% of the smell. So you'll get a much, much stronger sense of the flavor from a, a glass of this shape. There's proper science behind it. It's not just bollocks, a bit like the wine, the wine and whiskey tastings can be sometimes. Um, yes. But you can make, you can test that by holding your nose, eating some chocolate, you won't taste it, release your nose, and all of a sudden it'll hit you, the flavour will. Same thing here. So, Talisker Sky, 45.8%. I love this stuff. Like I say, peaty, smoky whiskey. Not very much left, unfortunately. But enough. Versus. Talisker Poetry. I'm not a Talisker fanboy. I'm open to try other things. But I do love the Isle of Sky. I do love the Talisker Distillery. I've been there a couple of times. Seriously, visit the Isle of Sky. We've got a poster of it up there. The Old Man Star. Famous hike. Wonderful. Sky. Poetry. Another little tip if you're going to sample whiskey, push your tongue against your bottom teeth, the back of your bottom teeth. Gives you access to um, taste buds in your tongue that usually, naturally, your tongue sort of tries to protect, uh, especially when you eat hot food or, or spicy food or um, sour food. Your tongue sort of rolls in on itself. I had th this whole explanation at some point. The point is, you will get a lot more flavour if you push it against your bottom teeth at the back uh, and um, it exposes those taste buds so they can't shirk away. I love peated whiskey. Mm, that's good. That's so good. To people that don't like smoky whiskies, this would be like um, let's, let's back that a little bit. Peat fires when you use peat as fuel rather than wood or coal peat being compressed vegetation um, gives off a very unique smell and it, and it flavours the water around about the northwest coast because all the water's peated so it's brown naturally in colour even though it's clean 
Um, I love that smell, but to someone who doesn't like peated stuff, that would be like licking a peat fire or something, but I just love it. Mm. That's good. I'll leave a little bit less so I can taste it again after that one. Palette cleanser. Right. The port tree, port cask, red in colour ish. I'm going to have to come up with a conclusion here, am I? I don't know. <laughs> I think the... The, I think the, the peated aftertaste is slightly more intense with the sky. Um, this has got a way more complex initial taste, initial flavour, but the peatiness isn't as intense afterwards and it doesn't linger quite as long as that one does. But then I, I say all this, to make it clear, I have really really poor sinuses and my sense of taste goes up and down and my sense of smell goes up and down. Sometimes I can barely taste anything at all and sometimes it's well more uh, near nearer what you consider normal. Um, so that, that will be affecting me a bit. I mean this would seem, uh, I need to get an operation or something because that would seem so intense to me if, if I got my sinuses fixed. Mm. Mm. I have to come back to this, but uh, that's that is much richer. This peaty aftertaste is so much richer, but this has got a way more complex initial taste. Not complex isn't a bad thing, but very. It's so nice. I'm not going to go for palate cleanser this time. I'm just going to go straight into it. If I had to choose, which I have to do for the sake of this video, I think the lingering aftertaste of the sky wins it for me. Just. Just. You know what I think I'll do? Because my sinuses are so poor and inconsistent, I need to come back to this. But right now, I'm going to give it 1-0 to the sky. Don't get me wrong. I rate this, personally, as a 10 out of 10 for flavour. I absolutely love this stuff. 
I also rate this as a 10 out of 10. It's gorgeous as well. But, hold on. What I have here, this is from the new distillery in Sky, is a peated candle. The smell, so the smell of burning peat. If you know, you know, it's one of the most wonderful smells in the world. I also love the smell of, you know, petrol, burning petrol, right at the back of, a high, especially a highly strong petrol car. But, oh, this is Pete from the Isle of Sky, the scent, and it's just, if you've, ever, if you've never smelled a peat fire before, you owe it to yourself, especially if you're that sort of person, if you're a fan of, campfires and barbecues and outdoors at night with the stars are out and all the rest of it you will love the smell of a peat fire and this is more evocative of that than this is to me right now with my poor sinuses so we're going to give it round one to the sky over the port tree however I'll wait for a day where my sinuses are fully clear again and go for round two because it might change. Oh, so good. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're settling on Sky just now, is what we're going to do. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I don't want to change my mind again, but I probably will next time. Please check in again. We might have a different conclusion. But you can't go wrong with either, either of these at all. Um, if you are the campfire sort, burn some peat, get a peat fire going, visit the Isle of Sky, you owe it to yourself, it's wonderful. For the moment, we're going to call Talisker Sky the winner with its elemental warm notes and verdant richness as opposed to Port Tree with notes of port drenched dark fruits welcoming sweet smoke. That's the thing, the smoke is slightly sweeter in this. The smoke is richer in this. If you are a fan of smoky whiskies, either of these will do you very well. Um, if you are getting into your Scotch whiskey and you want to sample a good PT whiskey, Talisker Sky is a very good way of jumping in there because it's not too expensive, especially if you find yourself a deal in some of the major supermarkets, you get this for much cheaper. Um, you know, you can get this for very little more than the likes of um, Jura whiskey, for example. Jura whiskey is fine, but it's kind of, of the lower end of really good whiskies starts at Jura, um, but you can get this for not much more than, let's be honest, crap like Bell's, Famous Grouse, Johnny Walker, all that rubbish. You know, this is on a deal. This is only going to be about eight to ten pounds more, not even maybe, and it's infinitely better. If you're new to Scotch whisky, I would not recommend you uh, jump straight into peated stuff, smoky stuff. It's probably going to be a bit much. Um, but that's entirely up to you. That's so good. Mm. Mm, that's good. No, I'm good. For today, this is it. We're, we're, Sky. Sky is the winner for today. Um, check in next time. I don't know when I'll do it next time, but I will do it next time. I'll do it head to head again. And perhaps we'll throw in the long row as well, and uh, we'll see we'll see which one comes out on top. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Not that this is in any way an informative video, but eh, you know, it's got cheddar cheese in it, so there's that. Take care. See you later. Bye bye.